to which Linux. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about five uh, unique things uh, that make Fedora one of a kind. So let's just get started with it. So first of all, uh, Fedora is like like the most stable uh, Linux distribution out there. That's for a good reason. Fedora uh, is built on uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So if you know anything about server-side Linux, uh, server-side Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is basically king. It's one of the most stable, secure, and tested uh, distribution out there. And uh, Fedora is just, uh, you know, like a GDM uh, on top of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So that's why it makes it so special. It's very lightweight, uh, and even the ISO image of it was around like 1.9 GB, which is very light, uh, very lightweight. It comes uh, with Genome out of the box, and also it is the choice of Linux distribution by, it, and, and also it's the choice of Linux distribution for Linus Torvalds the creator of the Linux himself. It's, it's for uh, a very good reason though. The second reason I would say is like Fedora has a really really good package manager that is like very powerful uh, handles dependency graphs pretty much unlike anything else like nothing comes in the competition even uh, Pac-Man from Arch Linux or even APT from Debian family so we have something called as DNF uh, in Fedora. Uh, so DNF is uh, a much better version of uh, YUM, sorry, YAY. So YAY is uh, one of the older versions which was being used in Fedora to install packages. And Fedora supports uh, .rpm packages. So you have YAY, you have uh, DNF, you have RPM itself. So if you have an RPM file, you would just do sudo RPM i for install and the file name dot rpm uh, if you would want to install something that only works with yay you would say sudo yay install package name if you would want to install anything else any modern package that is tested and uh, it's safe to use by fedora team itself you would do sudo dnf install maybe vlc any package name is what I meant to say uh, and the way uh, D DNF works is with transactional uh, based updates so if you if something goes wrong in between it just revert back that one particular transaction uh, let me just install the Fedora uh, one quick thing to mention about uh, DNF is it, it's really e easy to use and the vocabulary uh, that's used with the package manager is very user friendly. So I just use sudo dnf install and package name. So if I want to remove, all I gotta do is sudo dnf remove vlc. That's it. It would show you all the packages that are going to affect, what all uh, it's going to remove, and how much amount of size each package uh, is going to take up. All of this in all of this in a very nice formatted way. Okay, enough about DNF. Uh, let's uh, focus on something like every distribution supports. Say, suppose Flatpak. You do have Flatpak support out of the box enabled uh, for uh, Fedora, but then uh, it even becomes better. Fedora team uh, has tested a lot of packages, a lot of repositories, and they put it, put them down under software repositories in the software app that you have. And over here, uh, yeah, over here you can see applications FlatHub, Flatpak, Fedora FlatHub selection. So Fedora handpicks few applications, tests them, and only then they put them uh, under Fedora FlatHub section. Uh, and also they have another registry where they have Fedora Flatpaks, and for uh, RPM packages they have uh, another tested versions which they pick and that they are uh, they are enabled out of the box 
and one other quick ma uh, mention I want to do is the software app uh, that is built right into the Fedora app. This is one of the cleanest, fastest and lag free experience I have ever seen uh, in, a, uh, in a store or a software center for any Linux distribution. Say suppose Google Chrome. There you go. Say suppose you want VS Code. There you go. The search is very fluent uh, and like the app doesn't really hang unlike pop shop or even uh, add or remove software that is being provided out of the box in Arch Linux. Right, enough about package managers, enough about software and enough about how good Fedora is. Now let's move on to something that's really important for a lot of people like say suppose if you are a developer and if you are on the go. Uh, battery life is very critical for you and uh, Fedora has a very really uh, you know like hand picked uh, things going on in the background which manage the power flawlessly they use uh, the GNOME power management tool where you could see performance balanced and power saver but things go beyond that the battery life I'm getting out of this when I'm putting in the balance mode is almost eight hours uh, of my like mixed usage. I run a couple of virtual machines in the background. I code using VS Code and I use a lot of Chrome tabs. So with this mixed usage, I'm almost getting eight hours on balance and the performance isn't bad either. And most of the times the uh, CPU is, uh, the CPU idle uh, utilization is around like nine to 10 percent. Uh, it's it's even less lesser than that depending upon the processes you have in the background so that's that's really good like uh, if I put it in the performance mode I'm getting close to five hours uh, which is also really good uh, and in the uh, and I couldn't uh, really notice that much of a difference while compiling or opening tabs closing tabs watching videos between balance and performance but I could really see a difference when I drop things to power server though so let me uh, quickly put it back in performance mode well uh, there is a power management so the fourth point uh, that really that really uh, you know interests me is fedora is very beginner friendly it welcomes everyone with a very heart with a very warm heart and uh, when it comes to the user interfaces and user experience it uses genome genome is like the best bet for any Linux beginner and it has all these bells and whistles that come along with genome say suppose you want to take a screenshot yeah sure you, they have a built-in tool for that you want to record something they have a built-in tool right inside that say suppose you want to install some tweaks or extensions I would say you have genome tweaks say suppose you want to you know like a, you want a stable experience there you go say suppose you want gestures three fingers up to bring up the navigation menu or the windows and three fingers again up to bring up the applications and three fingers right to the next uh, desktop that you have three fingers again to the left to the previous desktop you have this is really really well written and well implemented gestures by genome and it really works well. Uh, I've been uh, using this gestures on my laptop for a very long time. Like I was a Manjaro user prior to this, but I've been using Fedora from like a month uh, at this point. And the software updates uh, and the overall user experience was really, really stable and smooth. Uh, my laptop has uh, almost 16 gigs of RAM, uh, as you could see here but like the usable is only 13 GB but I have multiple virtual machines running in the background all the time at least 20 chrome tabs at least 3 or 4 VS code windows and sometimes IntelliJ IDEA running in the background so even with all of these things uh, I did allocate like some of uh, some of my uh, disk space for the swap but it really manages it well very well unlike Arch Linux sometimes it just crashes uh, I mean like uh, from being an uh, Arch user coming into something 
as stable as Fedora, sometimes it almost feels like I'm not at all using Linux. It's something else. It's really, really stable. I mean, like, there are not even a lot of bugs that are there on the UI side too. And the best part is, uh, say suppose there is some security vulnerability in Linux kernel itself. Fedora, uh, not the Fedora team, Red Hat fixes it and uh, releases a security patch for it. Linus Torvald himself re uh, reviews the code and merges it into the kernel. And it's already built into Fedora because Fedora is built on uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So all the security patches that uh, Red Hat gets, Fedora gets them too. And also, uh, the last point, but not the least, I have is really, really uh, important for uh, any distribution out there. The software you get right out of the box or even the software you would install from the software application are really tested, secure and approved by Fedora team. So this is really important. Most of the times what happens is like say suppose you are a Debian user or an Arch Linux user. Even in the Arch user repository most of the times the packages that are released for the production uh, like, like that are out there for the users to install are not at all stable or it might break some some or the other thing but then with Fedora you don't have to worry about it at all because Fedora team puts in a lot of efforts uh, to test them uh, extensively and only then release to the software application uh, I would say uh, the advantage of being not having the bleeding edge if we look at the kernel itself so it's 6.07, uh, but it's not the bleeding edge. And it's not even an uh, LTS version as well. It's, it's right in between. Uh, that's what uh, makes Fedora one of a kind. You would have a stable Linux experience. You would have all the proper drivers you would ever need. You would have uh, such a pleasant experience, beginner friendly, and a very great package manager with excellent power management and resource management. What else you could ask for in a Linux distribution seriously? So that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, five really unique features that make Fedora one of a kind. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, also, uh, the wallpaper you are seeing, the, the one I'm using right now, is one of the genome wallpapers. I'm pretty surprised uh, when I saw this one for myself because it, it really is very good. Okay, that's it for this video guys. Let me know if you want to me to cover any special Linux distribution that I haven't checked out yet. Until then, bye.